Hi, good morning. Uh, good evening, I guess, for some people. Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about the Rust extensions that we wrote for the Python driver in the FJ. Uh, so, who are we? Uh, I'm Grant Lodge. I am a distributed systems engineer and X driver engineer for the FJ. And then, Ruben. sad story. I'm, I'm Ruben. Um, I work with the drivers team still, and I mainly maintain the Python driver. Excellent. So yeah, we're going to talk about kind of why we built the Rust extensions for the Python driver. Uh, talk about where where you, what value you can get from it, and how to get the extension. So uh, motivation: basically, a customer messaged us to say, "Hey, what's going on?" The, the nice thing about the FJ is we use Discord, and you can reach out to us and talk to us there, and we can much more engage and talk about this. So we, we end up having a kind of 400 message dialogue with a user about how there's this weird use case of having thousands of records, lots of columns, and then they were complaining about the Rust uh, Python driver being really slowly. Uh, helping them, we managed to find the HTTP API that the old Neo4j server uses uh, was outperforming it. So there's kind of this alarm bells are ringing moment. Uh, Fortunately for us, what just happened is Python 3.12 had released with perf support, so I could go and profile this, because uh, it's what I'm used to profiling with. And we found a nice hot path, uh, the the Packstream decoder. Uh, now, what is Packstream? <laughs> uh, if you don't know about the FJ's uh, protocol there, we use uh, Bolt, which is a binary protocol. Uh, and underneath that, we use a kind of format called Packstream. And the reason we use Packstream is that it's a binary efficient way of encoding any of our objects, much like JSON. So the nice thing about JSON is that everyone knows how it works. The bad thing about Packstream is no one does. Uh, it is based on message pack. And what we have is a way of encoding types and sizes of values as we go through the stream. So our simple object here of two key value pairs becomes slightly smaller. But this is as small as it can be. Bolt then extends this and encodes keys and values separately. So we can pack these into even smaller values. The interesting here is that we've got lots of small operations to deserialize these objects. So the question is, how can we make this more performant in Python? We know that the JSON deserializer in Python is going fast. We know that that's written in C. So we write in C, right? We're not big fans of C. <laughs> we had written, yeah, we've done our, we, we've done our degrees. We don't want to go back to C. So what then? We could use we could use Java. We have a Java library already. We could use Go. We have a Go library already. Uh, .NET definitely not with Python. Well, I guess we could be writing Rust. We are big Rust fanboys in between me and Ruben, and so we'll begin a Rust investigation. We just been playing around. After searching for this, we found Maturin, which is a really powerful library for binding your Python project like you would with C, but without having to do all the legwork. I quickly built a kind of proof of concept based on some work that I'd previously done, rewriting the .NET Packstream deserializer. And within two weeks, we had a proof of concept that was orders of magnitude faster. Let me productize it. Maybe to Ruben. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that's where Grant approached me, and he was like, I think I've got something cool here. Want to have a look? And I had a look, and I was like, hell yeah, that's something cool you've got there. Um, so I, I went on to productize it by adding the other way around, because he only implemented the decoding to basically POC that it gets actually faster, and it got much faster. So I added encoding. I added an injection mechanism so that the driver could pick up the Rust extensions as well as some packaging around it, CI to cross compile to other architectures uh, and testing. 
So for quality assurance, uh, speaking of testing, we run the Rust extensions through the exact same test suite as we run the driver through, plus some extra to make sure the injection and the Rust specific things are working the way we want them to work. Right, and from there on, you um, might be wondering how much faster is it actually, like in the context of the driver and the way it is right now. And to that extent, we've implemented a, a benchmark. In the bottom right, you can see a link to the code of the benchmark if you want to run it on your own machine or just have a look how exactly we did it, because I guess we'll have to gloss over a little bit in this short time window that we have. Um, first of all, if you've ever written any benchmark, you will know there's a plethora of pitfalls and things that are easy to get wrong. Um, for our testing, we decided to run it on the local host to minimize network latency and also run trivial queries to make sure the DBMS is not the thing we are benchmarking. Um, right, so we, we try to focus on actually the driver, how much faster does the driver get? Further, we have looked at different scenarios. One is read versus write heavy, which is like the deserialization and serialization, um, which are, you know, the, the, the two different parts. They, they are very different code paths in the driver and in the Rust extensions. And further, we were interested in looking at many small records versus few big records um, or, or messages because we only implemented the, the pack stream part in Rust and not the Bolt part. So whenever we do anything with Bolt, we are back in Python land. So yeah, this, this would not be faster. Cool. Looking at the results of, of the writing benchmark first, you'll see um, in the evaluation graph on the X axis, N cross M, which means we have a list of size N with M elements in uh, with a list of n elements in each element of that outer list. Um, unfortunately, Bolt does not give us a way to send a query over multiple messages. So this is the best we could do. Um, and you'll see in the results here that it doesn't make any difference which, which of the dimensions we scale, if it's the width or the length. That's because it's still not really going into the Bolt land more than it would be. It always stays in Rust. But you can see a, a healthy speed up of like a factor of four, at least on my machine. Um, right. Over to reading. Here the story looks different because in Bolt, you'll have one message per record. So the more records we get, the more often we hop back into Python land. And the fewer we have, but if they are big, we can spend much time in Rust. And you will see that uh, clearly in the result. Here is the result. You can see when we scale the number of records, the speed up is not much, which is on the right hand side. Um, but it's also worth noting that it never gets any slower. It's always at least a bit faster using the Rust extensions. Um, however, if you are scaling the width of the records, like how much data is in each record, you can see huge benefits of up to nine, which is, I think, like it, it, it blew, blew me away the first time I saw it. I was like, this is something good we're onto here. Um, so yeah, the key takeaway, depending on your use case, you will have more or less of a speed up, but it should never make your, your, uh, your, your application any slower. And this is a link to a blog post that we've published on Medium, where you can, uh, see more details about the, about the evaluation how exactly we structured the benchmark and a bit more in-depth, basically, evaluation of the results. Coolio, now, how do you get it? You might wonder if you, if you were convinced by the results as much as I've been. It's actually quite simple. You just replace your dependency in your requirements, TXT or Project Toml or whatever have you to manage your dependencies. You remove the Neo4j and you plug in the Neo4j Rust minus X. And uh, the version is exactly the same as the driver, except for we have a fourth element in our in our chain of version numbers, right? So instead of the driver version 5.26.0, in this example, you would install 5.26.0 dot something. And this something is what we use to 
to release patch versions of the Rust extensions that belong to the same driver version. So you'd probably want to have the latest there at least. Um, generally speaking, you should always have the latest version of the driver uh, with a, only the major version fixed because we do not push breaking changes in patch or minor versions. Uh, alternatively, you can install them both alongside each other, but make sure that the versions fit because at least pip sometimes um, can can be a bit, well, not as much safeguarding you as you would like to with version mismatches. It sometimes just gives you a warning and installs incompatible versions anyway. So yeah, be sure to get this right. This is, I think, only relevant really to other um, library authors and not so much for application authors. If you're an application author and you're at the end of the dependency chain, just install Neo4j Rust extension and remove the Neo4j dependency because the Rust extension has the driver as dependency. It will get pulled in. Everything is fine. Also, um, we have pre-compiled wheels, which is, which is Python's package format for, yeah, for pre-compiled binaries. So, for many platforms, pip will just download these and you're done. You don't need a Rust toolchain or anything on your machine. That is if your platform is supported, which as a wide variety is supported. If yours is not and you think you have a platform that's widely spread, reach out to us. We might be able to add it. Um, if your platform is not supported, there is always the option to go get yourself a Rust toolchain and the build dependencies needed, which will vary from platform to platform and then pip will compile from source the Rust extensions. And most importantly, that's it. You do not need to change your code. Like the public driver API will remain the same. The exceptions you get back and the messages are all the same. Tiny things might be different, specifically if you monkey patch the driver and do things you should not do, that might break. And also stack traces might look a little different because it's in the nature of native extensions that they will not appear in stack traces because there is no Python stack entries for the calls inside them. And that's everything we have for you. Uh, a little shout out we want to give. In a couple of hours, there is a session about Neo4RS, which is a community uh, contributed driver written in Rust for Rust. So if you are a Rust fanboy like us and you want to interact with, uh, inter interact with Neo4j, that might be, might be interesting for you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And don't forget, you have to rewrite it in Rust. <laughs>